first thoughts, what the heck did I just get myself into? My second thought, I think we can do something really cool with this boat. I'm also genuinely excited about this. And I don't know if it's because I got a pretty good deal on the boat. Um, as you guys can see back here, the sticker is for $749.99. I found an old ad that was behind the boat that was kind of tucked away that had a sale price of $699. And we were able to get this boat for $699. Your starting price might be a little bit different than mine at $749. This is going to be called the Sun Dolphin Series. And in this first video, we're going to kind of go over the specs of the boat. We're gonna walk around it and really look at everything, dive into the details of the actual boat and possibly spitball a few ideas around to see what we can come up with that we can do to this thing. But I'm gonna need a lot of help from you guys in the comment section. So please make sure to comment down in there some things that you'd like to see us do. This is one of the boats that I get asked about almost every day from you guys in the community. So we've never had a kit available for you specifically for this boat. So we're gonna try that now. And because the main idea behind this boat is you guys i would like your input as much as possible but let's go ahead and walk around the boat take a look at everything because i definitely already see some pros and i also see some cons okay so to start off with this is a sun dolphin american 12 foot made in 2022 always make sure that you leave the store with your bill of sale and a marine sales waiver you guys can see that the original price in the store is $749.99. I got it for $699.99, had a $42 sales tax added to it, which brought the total to $741.99. And you can see that even here, I paid the $699.99 for it. All right, so with all that being said, let's do a quick walk around. We do have a pre-molded spot for a hand tiller trolling motor which if we do some type of trolling motor up here we're gonna have to turn the head backwards and use uh the tiller from the inside which i want to know your opinion right away in the comments do you guys want to see this with a hand tiller or do you want to see it with some type of bow mount foot controlled trolling motor all right next we have this front little deck plate with two little cup holders that looks completely useless and then we have this front little cockpit area okay that's what we're going to call this the front cockpit we have a spot for a uh, 12 volt lead acid deep cycle battery once again looking useless because you know there's no strap there so i guess this is a uh, a, a gravity held system and then we have all these really annoying ridges inside the boat which in in theory could be cool if they channeled water to a certain area but you can see that there is absolutely nowhere in here uh for water to get channeled to to drain so that seems a little odd before we go any further i do need to say that this boat was inside the store there was one time where mike and i went to academy and saw these and they were outside and this thing was completely filled with water, proving the fact that the cockpits inside this boat do not drain. So we also have a uh, rod holder on this left side and a rod holder on the right side, which is being held with two rivets, some pretty cheap plastic there. Another little, you know, cup holder on each side of this middle. We're gonna call this the middle bench seat. My first question is, is there foam in here? I'm betting that there is. That feels pretty hard. It definitely feels like there is some foam inside that cavity. Moving on to the middle cockpit, we have a uh, little, I guess, storage spots. I mean, you could definitely stick some lures in there, but uh, aside from that, looks kind of useless. We have more of these annoying channels down in the cockpit floor with no way or nowhere to divert water, but at least we got two more rod holders back here. So that's, that's, you know, that's a selling point. Now back to the rear bench. We have two more cup holders, one on each side. So that brings this boat to a total of two, four, six cup holders. So that's a plus. Uh, not much going on here in this uh, rear bench. There's definitely something under there as well. So that's good. We come back here to the back. We have a little bit more storage spot for maybe some lures or something. Some more of this annoying channeling and a better battery spot that actually comes with a strap and uh some information back here probably need to keep that but regardless at least there's a uh, a strap back here uh being held down with a few rivets on each end here's definitely one of the pros to this boat it's rated for two persons or 390 pounds this thing has a 532 pound weight capacity with persons motor and gear 
and it can handle up to a six horsepower outboard motor, which is actually pretty good. 532 pounds out of a 12 foot plastic boat, I feel like is pretty respectable. And of course it was assembled in America. Not made though, just assembled. On the transom, we have a uh, aluminum transom mounting plate that is held in with self-tapping screws in the inside the transom and four on the outside of the transom so that's really nice we have our whole id number which is riveted to the boat but still feels like a sticker so that what the heck and then back here we have the drain the drain plug wait a second okay so so we definitely have one drain plug here okay for for um everything which i guess could only drain this this rear cockpit area but okay that's that's pretty cool and i'm assuming this one you know, they made a little indention for it, but I'm assuming this one is for draining any water that gets in between the two molded portions. That's the case. Okay, I, I think there's wood in there. I, I think this transom has wood in it. But either way, if this does drain in between both molded portions, that actually kind of changes the game for us a little bit. I was not expecting that that might be a very valuable piece to this whole equation yeah i really like that that's that's definitely a pro about this little boat because the palm prowlers don't have that which always meant that if you got water in between this little seal then you just had water sitting down inside of there and you really couldn't do anything about it unless you manually installed a drain plug for it but it looks like we don't have to do that with this one we also have some uh, little rowboat holder. I guess that's what that is. Once again, really useless to us here at TB Nation. But And then also up front, we do have a little uh, hook right here for a winch to put this up on a trailer. I did have this in the bed of my truck. That's how I got it over here. I actually had to already modify the boat. I had to make these little holes with a pocket knife in order to get the uh, strap inside of there to, to hold this thing down in the bed of the truck. But... It actually worked pretty well because there's no other mounting points. And I did see this hook after I had already put the first hole in. So I guess I could have mounted it here. But just keep that in mind. If you go to buy one of these at, at the store and don't have a way to uh, to strap it down, bring yourself a little knife or preferably a drill and a drill bit. That would have done it faster and gotten that out. But you can see all my debris laying in there. This was the first video going over the boat, going over the cost, going over the specs of this thing. So we're gonna get it registered, get a cost on that. Then we're gonna take this thing out to the lake and see how it does just stop. After we do a test with the boat, then I'm gonna walk you through the entire pre-planning process. We're also gonna have to figure out what lid sizes will work, where we're gonna place them and what we're gonna use them for, how we're gonna distribute the weight throughout this thing. But I also need you guys to go down in the comments and tell me how, how serious do you want us to take this? In my opinion, we could go one of two ways. We could keep it extremely simple, just like the Weekend Warrior kit, which is what I would like to do. Or we could go full Mike Lopez on this thing and, and just, just add as many hatches as we can and make it extremely absurd. What do you guys think? I'd like to know your opinions on that. But keep in mind, the, the more that we add to this, the higher the cost becomes. If we do something minimalistic, simple, and easy, not only is your build time faster, you're also not spending as much. But if we go into more detail and we add a bunch of hatches, you're gonna be in this joker for, for a lot more time and money than if you were just to, to do something that will be sufficient enough to get you out there. So please let me know what you guys think on that. Please subscribe to the channel. And like I said before, your comments are always welcome. I need some ideas. I need some help. Leave a like on the video if you're excited to see how this goes. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.